<clears throat> All right, well, um, thank you uh, for everybody participating here tonight. Um, I've turned my video on just because I feel it's a little bit better to, to see the person who's making the presentation, um, uh, you know, sort of like being in the public meeting. Uh, this is uh, my first public meeting I've had to do virtually. I'm usually better at these in person, so we'll, we'll see how this works. Uh, I've been on countless uh, virtual meetings, however, over the last seven months, so I've gotten this down pretty well, but this public meeting will be pretty interesting, I think. Um, and I do know that it's Monday night, and, and we now have two Monday night football games, so um, I'll uh, make sure that I try to get us out of here pretty quick to, to be able to do some fun stuff after this. Uh, looks like we've got about 12 people online now, so I'll go ahead and get started, and um, as as more people show up, we'll, we'll get them um, uh, acclimated to this, so. So I'll go ahead and start. Welcome to the Bellar Drive South Bike Lanes Community Meeting. My name is Chad Edwards, and I'm an Assistant Director and the Regional Mobility and Innovation Officer in the Transportation and Public Works Department for the City of Fort Worth. And thank you very much for taking the time out of your afternoon, your evening, to, to sit here with us to talk about the, uh, this uh, important project. This is a virtual meeting and we are using WebEx and we are recording the presentation tonight. So uh, I just want to make sure that everybody knew that as well. And that recording will be for those who can't attend um, this particular meeting. So if you're unfamiliar with the virtual meetings, it's important that you make sure that your mic is muted when you're not talking so others can hear the presentation and then the questions that are asked by others. I do have city staff assisting me and they will be monitoring any open mics uh, that may be causing interference uh, with the speakers and they'll mute them. It sounds like we're doing pretty well tonight, so uh, we'll keep going. You can unmute yourself when you're ready to talk. Um, we'll do the, the comments and questions at the end of the presentation. As for the video, it's up to you if you'd like to have that video on or not. Uh, I have a small number of slides to present that will cover the project location, the current and proposed configurations, and then we will get into any community discussion that you'd like to have tonight. You are welcome to post questions in the chat box or, or ask those questions at the end of the presentation. I ask that you say your name before asking your questions or making your comments so we know who is speaking. You may also send your questions or comments to me at the address on the screen before the close of business on Monday, October 19th. This is two weeks from tonight. I should give you enough time to make any comments that you wish to make on the project. So let's get into the project. The project we're discussing tonight is, tonight is the extension of the bike lanes on Bellard Drive South between Oakmont Boulevard and Bryant Irvin Road in the southwest part of Fort Worth. The project is highlighted in yellow on the map, and I'm, I'll zoom in in a moment so you can see that clearly. As you can see, the project is a little over a half mile, and the concrete width of the street is approximately 48 feet curb to curb. The traffic counts are relatively low uh, at a little over 2,800 vehicles per day using this segment of Bella Drive South. The purpose of this project is, um, besides extending the bike lanes, would be to provide a safer environment for bicyclists and to also provide some traffic calming measures like the reduction uh, of a number of lanes from two lanes to four lanes. And there'd be also, there'd also be consideration of turn lanes as needed. Um, and I'll share some early design concepts in, uh, in a moment. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight a little bit clearer the project between Oakmont Boulevard and Brian Urban Road there. So you can see that project. <clears throat> this graph here shows the average daily traffic counts collected in 2018. You can also see the graph um, shows the hourly distribution 
of vehicles. I've called out a couple of hours during the day where the most vehicles were counted. The eight o'clock hour in the morning peak period with a total of both directions of 263 vehicles. And in the afternoon, the direction is really split and you have on the northbound shown in blue had the most vehicles at 101 and at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. And the southbound shown there in orange had the most vehicles of 183 at five o'clock in the afternoon during that peak period. Overall, this is a low volume roadway with limited or no congestion most of the day. We would have normally updated the traffic counts to a current year, uh, as you can tell, it's 2018, but we're unable to do so due to COVID. You have um, probably noticed that the traffic patterns have changed if you've been traveling outside the household at all. So your normal peak period travel times are, are a little bit different now. Um, so on the highways, we've noticed that a lot of the morning and afternoon peak periods have flattened out. And so it's not as high uh, peak periods as it used to be. And uh, we're also seeing this on the, the uh, city streets as well. <clears throat> so the city developed the active tra transportation plan to help guide future investments in sidewalks and bike lanes throughout the city. The ATP was approved by city council in April of 2019. <clears throat> An excerpt of the bike lanes map is shown on the slide here. The red circle shows the location of the bike lanes being discussed. The blue line in the center there uh, of the circle shows the proposed bike facility recommendation from the ATP. This map also demonstrates the connections to existing and future bike lanes and trails. So again, I'll kind of zoom in for you there. Um, this is the Bel Air Drive South. This is uh, Brian Irvin. This is Oakmont. And so again, Bel Air here, you can see it listed. Um, these are existing trails, part of the Trinity Trail. Uh, you can see the legend here a little bit better. So this is the proposed bike facility there in blue. So this slide, the next slide here shows, uh, is an interesting map that, that highlight, highlights the activity of walkers and bicycles. So you can see that the, the section of Bel Air Drive South in that red circle uh, has a pretty high level of activity without even the proposed dedicated bike lanes that we're talking about here tonight. The data shown here is from Strava, and Strava is a voluntary internet service used for tracking uh, exercise like cycling and running through GPS data and smartwatches. This helps show the, the connections uh, to other facilities in the area and the pattern of travel by those uh, informing the Strava um, voluntary data resource there. You can see a high level of activity on the uh, Fort Worth branch of the Trinity Trails, uh, really connecting through uh, Oakmont Park there. A lot of activity, uh, excuse me, I'll, uh, I'll zoom in here again. You can see the activity along Bel Air Drive uh, and then uh, part of the, the Trinity Trails, the Fort Worth branch there, and then the connection to uh, Oakmont Park as well. And then the other connections there in the area. So um, to help get a little perspective for everybody uh, online here, I've um, I put an image of the roadway that I took from Google Maps to show the, the corridor, just a cross section, kind of a sample of the corridor uh, and the number of lanes that are there. It's four lanes. Um, on the west side of the corridor, you see that there's some trees. They're planted in between the masonry wall and the, uh, the curb. Not a lot of space there for any additional um, infrastructure like sidewalks or anything like that. And then on the east side, you do have some sidewalks. Um, this happens to be a part of the corridor that has sidewalks. Uh, there are some sections along that corridor that don't have any sidewalks. This particular stretch of road 
uh, has a, a park entrance. It has a couple of residential neighborhood entrances. It has a few commercial businesses and driveways, and then it also has a school along uh, in this area as well. And uh, although this is a short project, there, there may be a need for some turn lanes so that people can access uh, those particular uh, land uses a little bit easier. So I've taken this image and I've converted it into a drawing that makes it a little bit easier to, um, to compare between the uh, proposals. So this is the current Bel Air Drive South, very similar with the tree on the left and the sidewalk on the right. Um, and what I'm highlighting here is that um, uh, the four lanes that are out there today and the cross section of this particular roadway. And so this is a tool that we use to help share um, some ideas as we plan for these projects. Once we get into the details and, and finalize a cross section, the engineers get to take it over and uh, put a little bit more uh, details to it. So this is our current setup. And so what we're proposing is, is very simple, is just to add bike lanes on, on that corridor. And so the, the first diagram here shows the bike lanes on either side of the street with a buffer between the bike lane and the drive lanes, the vehicle lanes. Uh, you can see some notes there at the, the bottom of the image uh, noting minimums and maximums, and the bike lanes should be at least six feet, and the buffer should be at least uh, two foot wide. And the vehicle lanes should be no more than, than 11 foot wide to help with the traffic calming and slowing of these vehicles. So I have noticed that the um, speed limit is 30 miles an hour out there, and in some cases, there are some drivers that are going a little bit uh, quicker than that. And so this would this would be helpful to kind of help slow those folks down through that corridor. So uh, I had mentioned turn lanes, and so this next um, uh, image here really shows what what it might be with the turn lane. There, we still have enough space to be able to put the bike lanes and the buffer, and then the two travel lanes, and then in the middle there could be a turn lane. Um, it could be uh, 10 to 11 foot wide, depending on on the, the actual width of the roadway as it goes through that, that entire corridor. Um, and then uh, due to the short length of the project and to simplify the lane markings, um, you know, a center turn lane may be considered for the project. So you know, I'd like to hear you know, your thoughts on you know, a center turn lane, uh, if that's something that is, is amenable to the group or, you know, if you guys don't necessarily like that or not. All right. So, like I said, I had a few slides. This kind of wraps up the, the short presentation. Um, before I open it up for questions, I wanted to share our next steps with you. So we'll collect the feedback from tonight's meeting. Uh, if it's a it's, it's positive feedback and there's support for the project, then, then we'll need to uh, get some basic engineering on the project done um, to get the bike lanes, the buffers, the vehicle lanes, turn lanes, all the widths appropriately sized. Uh, we'll have to take this to city council. Uh, since this is a reduction in travel lanes, city council has to approve that uh, project. Uh, and then uh, I'd like to get in front of the city council before the end of the year and uh, assuming that council approves the project, then the lanes could be installed uh, as early as next year. Uh, now, as a reminder, and, and I didn't highlight this on a previous slide, but um, we're not talking about any major construction. So the, the width of the road that's out there today is what we would utilize. So we're not looking at digging up anything to, to put in these bike lanes. So that should be helpful. This is mainly a striping project, and so it's just, you know, essentially um, uh, paint on the ground, and there may be some um, some little uh, buttons or something like that in the uh, buffer area to help um, make sure people understand the, the difference between the travel lane and the, the buffer and the bike lane. So uh, just to put anybody's mind at ease, this isn't a major 
uh, reconstruction of this corridor. Um, so um, this is a duplicate of the slide I had put in earlier just to make sure that you uh, were thinking about it on the front end. And then as we get to it, if you have any comments tonight, you know, you're more than welcome to put those into the, the chat or you can send me an email later on. Uh, I plan on um, putting this presentation um, on our website so that you can uh, watch this again and see the see the actual slides a little bit closer if you want to. That way it gives you some time to um, put uh, some comments together as well. All right, so um, I'll ask uh, Jeff Allen, who's helping me, who's a, a communications coordinator with the city. Uh, Jeff, any comments, questions? So uh, no questions in chat yet. We do have a comment uh, from okay. Dean Johnson that uh, it seems more traffic information is needed before knowing if a turn lane is required. It appears that uh, currently a separate turn lane is not necessary. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a great comment. Um, you know, the I, as I was looking through the the slides and I saw the the turn lane here, I wanted to make sure that. That people understood what that was that it, it could be just a turn lane into a neighborhood or into a business um, but the, the continuous turn lane down the, the middle of the corridor uh, may end up being overkill and, and not necessary so you're right there's some additional uh, work that needs to be done on that so thanks dean and then we have uh, two comments uh, both from karen that uh, she supports the bike lanes and the addition of a turn lane and then with the school, there's often a backup during arrival and dismissal. Yes, I actually spoke to somebody at the school today and they um, uh, shared those comments with me as well as to make sure that, that we keep in mind that the school has uh, two very busy times during the day uh, of dropping off and picking up the kids. So yes, thank you very much. Does anybody have any uh, comments uh, that they didn't want to type in but wanted to make otherwise? Uh, hey, hey, Chad, good evening. This is uh, Tim Green. How are you? Thank Hi, you very Tim. much for doing this. This is fantastic. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Or one, question I, <laughs> well, one question I had with respect to um, on-street parking. So I know, again, particularly around the vicinity of the school and the church, uh, that there are occasions, particularly on Sundays, where I think somebody else has made a comment here, where people do like to park on the street. What, what would the situation be as to regulations for parking if there were bike lanes in place? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, uh, we'll have to look at how um how the corridor can be uh, striped out uh, if there is a need for for parking is that a, a possibility uh, near the school um, uh, how much space does it take you know those types of things before we actually settle on if that's something that we can um, provide for or not it, it is parking allowed on bike lanes uh, not officially <laughs> allowed on bike lanes. <laughs> that doesn't mean that people don't do it. No. So it would be subject to a ticket, you're saying, if people parked on a bike lane. Uh, that's a hard, uh, a hard uh, question, I think, to answer is that, you know, the typically the people aren't going to be there very long. They're going to be there for, you know, a, a short time to, to pick up their kids if they're parking well, yeah, at yeah. school. What I'm right. thinking of a couple of hours on a Sunday morning for church services is, is when there's a high incidence of on-street parking. Oh, I see. So, so well, you know, which is also we'll, when there are a lot of cyclists around. Right. So what we need to talk to the to the school there and see um, what their um, activities are yeah. a little bit more so that we can get a better sense of that. Okay. Yeah, no, that's that's great information. This is why we have meetings like this. 
And Chad, we have a couple more comments and a question. Okay. Um, Steph Stephanie said, thank you so much for the hard work on the project. Uh, this is such a positive step towards protecting the safety of cyclists and runners. Uh, she supports the bike lane, but is neutral on the turn lane. And it should also be noted on Sundays there is church parking on the street. Uh, right. which we just talked about. Yeah. Uh, George said he supports the turn lane where needed, but possibly not the entire length of the road that look, we're looking at. Okay. Um, Amy said, how is this going to affect the right turning lane at the light by the children's courtyard at the Bel Air Light and Brian Irvin? So the bike lanes probably won't start until after that, um, that short median that's there. And so I know there's kind of a divided area there between the, uh, there at the intersection with the median. And so the bike lanes would start just just a little bit uh, north of that, so that we wouldn't mess up any of the turning movements there at the intersection. Okay. Could we uh, also have someone uh, from our staff look into whether it is legal to park in a bike lane? Yeah, we could do that. Um, I'm Amy, the one in uh, Hawthorne Park that just sent the, the, the message about the light. Um, you know, lots of cars turn down and come around that esplanade, that center section there where the grass is, to come into that courtyard. So yes, the, the bicycle lane could not start there or there will be a lot of people getting hit by cars that are on bikes and stuff. Um, and like that y'all were already talking about the school, the, the church outside of our gate to Hawthorne Park is also a school. And uh, I come and go out of our neighborhood and see the front of that school all the time. And there are, they use that, they need that extra parking on the street a lot. Okay. I see them using it a lot. So they must need it. So, so part of our work will have to be um, to to see how how much parking they utilize uh, along that corridor. Uh, how far down do they have to go to park on the street? And that that'll give us a, a sense of where the you know if there is parking that we want to put on the street. You know how far down does it go? I, I on a on a basis I kind of on a normal basis I kind of see the cars. On any other events at the school or church or whatever, I usually see cars. I don't go there or anything. I just kind of pay attention. But I usually see cars the whole length of the front parking lot at the church and the whole length of the lot to the right where the basketball goal is. They they use entirely in front of their property. Okay. Which will be all the way down to the creek where the right. creek right. goes up the creek. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been down there a few times to, to make sure I'm familiar with the area. So, okay, so near, near the creek then. And I'm getting a, a message that if, if the bike lanes are blocked, they can be sighted. Um, well, then that would be a big problem. So, yeah, well, that's what we have to figure out. You know, is there an opportunity? Um, well, is there a way to be able to put some some parking in there if, if need be so? Okay. Yeah, I don't Chad, think we do have another... Okay, go ahead. Oh, sorry, we do have one more question. Uh, you mentioned what? that cars, um, they go a little faster than the posted speed limit. Is it possible to put some speed bumps as well? Um, I don't... Waiting for a, a response from somebody, but I don't think we're doing speed bumps any longer. Uh, this is Tim Green again. Is that a factually true statement that a few cars go a little faster than the speed limit? I, I think that's a mischaracterization of the. Uh, <laughs> More than a lot of cars are going over the speed limit. Is that what you're very few cars go obey the posted speed limit. Is what the data shows. Right. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know um, on on speed bumps. I don't I don't know that the city is putting in speed bumps any longer on um, on roadways. But uh, again, even in the vicinity of the park, Oakmont Park, where, where there's a lot of uh, again foot bicycle traffic, children uh, accessing the park. Um, again, it would be a, 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 and with a, an advisory speed limit of 25 miles per hour that I'm sure no vehicle uh, adheres to. Right. Um, again, it's a particular safety issue in that stretch adjacent to the park. I, I did notice that there at the entrance of the park, there's a raised uh, crosswalk. Yes, at the north entrance, at the south parking lot, it would be nice to have something similar to that, if that were possible. Yes, I agree with it on that situation because there is a a device there that helps people slow down that other part near that other parking lot. Sometimes they just are going pretty fast and jump over it. <laughs> so well, they didn't yeah. see it. <laughs> Uh, hey, by, the, them, so. by the way, I know this has nothing to do with bicycle lanes, but do you know who we should contact about how we we ought to do like Houston does with some of their neighborhood parks where they are said to be closed at dusk dark and there should be a sign. I do think there's a lot of fishy stuff going on in that park after dark deep into the park on the Trinity River on the Clear Fork. Okay. Uh, drug deals, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And I don't think anybody needs to be in there in the deep dark, deep into that area and those trees and their car out there. It just I drive by there. There's cars out there at two in the morning and people walking out of the park. Right. I really think in this city, all all parks need to close at dark and cars should not be in the lot for the park at dark. But that's just me. <laughs> I mean, so, I'm close friends with Brian Bird and City Council. I guess I could call Brian, get him started on that. But that's always an option. Uh, uh, the Parks Department would uh, be in charge of that. Uh, I mean, I just think there's a, a safety issue, you know. Right, right. I'm trying to see. I don't see any. I didn't know if Councilmember Bird was going to participate tonight or not, so I was just looking uh, for the Brian's name. not on just, here. Okay. Chad, we do have a couple of call-in people that uh, I'm going to unmute in a second because uh, they can't okay. unmute themselves. Uh, okay. We also got a couple. We got a couple more questions or comments and questions that came in first. So I'm going to run through them real quick. Okay. Uh, it's from Karen, it's a minor idea. Is it possible to label? It multi-use for running, walking, cycling, inclusive rather than just a bike lane. All right. Well, we can look into that. Okay. Uh, George says no to speed bumps. Nice short one there. And then Stephanie said speeding is a major problem in this section, especially during rush hour. Uh, and it's exactly during these times that drivers pay no attention to cyclists and runners, which is exactly why we need to get rid of the second lane of traffic and install the bike lane, regardless of church school parking issues. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's part of the balance of doing projects like this is, is, you know, all the, all the different and competing interests. How do we balance all that? So that's something that we'll have to look at as well. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, for the two call-in two call-in users, uh, if your phone number ends in eight six, I'm going to unmute you in case you have any questions. So you're unmuted. Hello. And I'm going to unmute. I'm going to unmute the ends in three one as well. So you're both unmuted if you have anything to share. You're on the phone. You probably um, you can't see my uh, email address, and so I'll I'll say it so you guys can um, capture it. Uh, if you have a pen or something like that to, to write it down, uh, my email address is chad c h a d 
dot e d w a r d s edwards at fort worth texas dot gov so you can you can send me an email if you had questions or comments about uh, the presentation or uh, any comments that you heard here tonight hi chad this is clint from traffic transportation hey, management um, I have some insight for the uh, speed hump issue. There was a uh, resolution passed from council in 2009 that eliminated uh, speed bumps from our traffic calming um, and speed mitigation toolbox. So we're not replacing or placing new speed bumps anywhere in the city at this time due to that 2009 resolution. Okay. I, I thought I had heard that and I just, I couldn't give the details like you did. So I appreciate it. That's good for everybody to, to know. I, I can't take the credit, sir, but it's been provided to me. So <laughs> no, take it, take it where you can. All right. Well, if, if you don't have any other comments or questions, like I said, um, you know, you can send me comments, uh, up until the 19th of uh, October. Uh, we'll kind of keep it open a little bit so you guys have an opportunity to uh, talk uh, with your neighbors and, and, and friends there to see what kind of ideas you guys have about the, um, about the proposals that we have here uh, for Bel Air Drive South and the bike lanes. So um, I, I appreciate you guys coming tonight or participating tonight. And um, uh, with that, we'll go ahead and, and close the public meeting and uh, you guys have a, a good evening. Sorry, where, where will the slides be posted? Uh, Jeff, where will, where will we post the slides? Well, uh, for sure they will go on our city YouTube page um, okay. for everyone to watch. We don't have a project specific page for this yet, so I'll have to kind of look around and see if there's another location we can put it on the website. Okay, very good. Thank you. And thanks again for all your work on this. No problem. Thank you guys for coming in tonight and, and uh, sharing your thoughts and comments. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye bye.